Hello, beautiful people from wherever you're watching us. You are welcome to yet our other broadcast on As a Matter of Fact, where we talk about issues within our region, issues within Africa, things that concern us, concern our neighbors, and you know, as a, um, a continent as well. So you're welcome to as a matter of fact today and we are going to be looking at majorly two issues one we're going to look at um, the m23 you're going to forgive me we're going to dwell so much on the conflict going on in uh, drc for a number of episodes of our shows because we want to bring you up and close to the understanding of the conflict and what East Africa member states are doing to make sure that this conflict comes to an end. So we're going to be dwelling so much onto it for a number of episodes. So if you feel like it's too much, please hang in there because we believe it is very important for you are to understand these things and know what's going on with our neighbors who directly um, mean a lot to us as well. So we're going to, you know, look at that, but also we're going to bring in the issue of South Sudan deciding to pull out of the peace talks with the rebels. Okay? So those are the two issues, those are the two key elements that we're going to look on on today's show. So, you're welcome aboard and let's start. Now, the issue of M23 and the East African Federation and uh, the East African Regional Force began a few weeks ago. The M23 insurgents, you know, resurfaced at the beginning of this year, and there's been a lot of annihilations going on in the DRC, masterminded by the M23. We're not going to go back into the history of the M23 because in our previous episodes we've been really talking much about it. Um, so we're not going to dwell so much into it. But we're going to look at a key factor which is, is M23 not scared of the East African regional force? Is M23 not scared of the East African regional force? Okay, because for the past one or two weeks, the East African countries in which DRC is a member have been preparing themselves to send forces into the DRC to ensure that the M23 is dealt with once and for all. This came as a result of some, several attacks by the M23, especially in the eastern part of the DRC, leading into a mass exodus of people, an influx of refugees in the neighboring countries, especially Uganda. So, we started with Burundi sending in their troops, followed by Kenya, which sent in 900 troops, and then Uganda, at the beginning of this week, also decided that they will be sending 1,000 troops into the DRC. While the KDF is manning Goma, UPDF is also not far away from where Kenya is, but also manning a different area. But entirely, they're all 
running the provincial, they're, they're all manning, literally manning the provincial um, capital of the DRC, which is Goma, much as they are not situated in the same place. So, the East African countries have already started sending their troops into the DRC. And I'm pretty sure soon, Tanzania will follow suit, South Sudan will follow suit, Rwanda, you know, to make a whole complete set of the East African countries. But while all this is going on, the M23 rebels have not stopped carrying out their attacks, have not stopped, you know, uh, capturing villages after villages after villages. And they have continuously come out through their spokesperson to directly inform the public about their goals and objectives of this war. They seem not scared. They seem not worried that the, the East African regional forces are combining efforts confront them in the DRC where do they get the energy where do they get the strength why are no, why are they not terrified by these forces that are coming together with the money with the army well trained and everything to fight them they are not scared they are not worried, or they seem not worried. A few days ago, uh, to be particular, on um, 24th, on 23rd, 23rd, 24th, the president of DRC, Felix, met the foreign minister of Rwanda, Vincent Biruta in Angola and an agreement was reached to end atrocities to end disputes in the DRC how did this affects the M23 I don't know because it sounded as though the president of DRC and Rwanda were ending or were putting to an end the atrocities caused by the M23. And for so long, Rwanda has always refuted allegations that it has anything to do with the M23. Now, how their argument with the president of the DRC, Felix Kishekedi, affects the M23 as a person? I don't understand the fact that Rwanda has nothing to do with the M23. Now, it is not only my knowledge. It is only, it's not only me who thinks like that. But the M M23 do. After the pact was reached and was meant to take effect on Friday at around 5 p.m., I mean, it was a directive. The, the resolution was M23 was to stop whatever they were doing and leave the villages that they had captured by 5 p.m. of Friday 25th. The deadline reached, elapsed, and M23 did not stop carrying out raids of villages, did not stop doing what they were doing. What message that does this send? They're not scared. They're not worried. Reach your pact, but it doesn't concern us. If I may quote, the spokesperson of the 
M23, um, came out to say that Rwanda Congo ceasefire does not concern us. The Rwanda Congo uh, ceasefire does not concern the M23. And I also think that is true. I mean, if Rwanda says that they have no idea of the M23, so where does their ceasefire agreement with DRC concern M23? I don't see it. But as a force, but as a rebel union, Having heard of that, at least something should have run through their mind. At least they would have been baffled by this. But the M23 is not moved. They've not stopped carrying out their raids. They seem not scared. They seem not worried. Now, where do they get that kind of zeal? Where do they get that kind of energy? What is the reason? What is the agenda? is what we're looking at. Or it is what is, you know, buffeting our minds. They are not scared. They are not moved. They are not moved that there's, there, was, there, there was an agreement reached for a ceasefire, and they are not moved that there is already an East African regional force in DRC just waiting for a spark waiting for a goal to go so hard on the M23. But they are not worried. As we speak, according to the reports and some sources, the M23 are 25 kilometers. No, they are 40 kilometers, about 25 miles away from Goma. And after the, the, the signing of the truce, the M23 carried out raids around that place. They are not scared. And it should be worrying. Why are they not scared of the force? The forces that are already in the DRC are not taking up arms until the M23 fail on the following. Leaving the villages and towns and small towns that they've captured to their original locations or a ceasefire. But here is a force, here is a, a rebel union that has come out to say that does not concern us. We want direct talks with the government of the DRC. They are calling shots. The government of the DRC also says we cannot negotiate with the rebels. We cannot negotiate, actually, with the, terrorists, with the terrorists. They are looking at M23 as terrorists. So where is this going to leave the region? Where is this going to leave the eastern part of DRC if the warring factions are not able to come to terms? It so means that very soon, Sooner than later, we're going to see the East African regional forces swinging into action to confront and fight the M23. Because it seems they are not scared. It seems they are not moving a leg. It seems they are not ready to give up every single, every single, any single territory that they've already captured until their agenda, their objectives are met. They want a direct talk, a direct dialogue with the government of the DRC. 
All right. Now, um, let's move to South Sudan. We all understand, you know, what South Sudan has gone through ever since they go to their independence from the main Sudan. There's been a lot of, you know, civil wars. So many warring factions. However, there was some little bit of, you know, relief when the forces led by Riek Machal reached an agreement and decided to join the government as Riek Machal was reinstated as the vice president of the Republic of South Sudan. There were rebel unions because the, the, the calling was upon all the engraved groups, opposition groups, to come together and find a lasting solution for the new African country. A number of rebel groups, a number of opposition groups were able to lay down their tools, but some other groups did not agree and went ahead, you know, to cause some havocs, isolated havocs within the South Sudan. There was another call for an agreement to be reached. Okay? And the peace talks have been taking place in Rome to find a lasting solution with these isolated groups that did not agree to join the government. But according to the government of South Sudan, they are saying these groups have been using these peace talks as a bargaining chip and a way of buying themselves time to prepare for war in South Sudan. So it is according to this that the government of South Sudan has decided to stop all the talks until when these groups make up their mind. We're going to, you know, go through this article in the Daily Monitor of, you know, 25th and look at the reasoning that the government of South Sudan has for leaving these peace talks. This article is dated Friday, November 25th, 2022. The working title is South Sudan pulls out of peace talks with rebel groups. South Sudan's government has withdrawn from peace negotiations with rebel groups, accusing them of using the talks to buy time as they prepare for war. You know, there is another quote. You know, it seems like the Daily Monitor of Uganda was also quoting uh, a letter seen by AFP on Friday. Okay? The talks between the government and the coalition of rebel groups, which did not sign a 2018 peace agreement that ended a five-year civil war, were brokered in Rome by a Catholic association with ties to the Vatican. So, um, these groups that did not sign an agreement with the government of South Sudan in 2018 uh, are the ones that the government has been trying to meet in Rome to find a lasting solution for the problems of South Sudan, for the atrocities to stop, for those isolated, you know, attacks to stop. 
We continue. The negotiations began in 2009. Uh, sorry. The negotiations began in 2009. I beg your pardon. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. The negotiations began in 2019, but have failed to curb violence in south, in, in south of the country, despite, despite a ceasefire signed in January 2020. In a letter dated November 21st and addressed to the Catholic community of St. Of Saint, Saint Egidio, Presidential Affairs Minister of South Sudan, Baraba Marielle Benjamin said the government has suspended its participation in the Rome peace talks until further notice. He quotes, oh, quote, while we have been preparing to engage in serious dialogue with non signatory South Sudan opposition groups to bring lasting peace to the country, it has come to our attention that this group is using these peace talks to buy time as they prepare for war. That is according to Benjamin. The government had previously pulled out of talks that is last year, choosing one of the groups, the National Salvation Front, NAS, of carrying out the indiscriminated attacks in south of the country. But in August, it is, it is said that the government was ready to resume the negotiations. You know, there was a failed attempt. There was not a failed attempt. Uh, the government had already attempted at one point to withdraw from these peace talks when one of the groups, the ANS, uh, was still carrying out attacks in the south part, southern part of South Sudan. So they threatened to put out, but all but uh, you know made up their mind to continue with the negotiations uh, until now. The rebels coalitions in October announced that it was changing its name from South Sudan Opposition Alliance (SSOMA) to NAN blah 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 non signatories the world's the world's newest nation has suffered chronic instability since winning independence from sudan in 2011 okay so basically the government is deciding to pull out of these negotiations that have that have been taking place in rome after identifying that these, in, um, these groups that did not reach an agreement in 2018 are using these talks as an avenue to prepare for a bigger war in South Sudan. That is what is transpiring in South Sudan. Okay? So you can see that much as there is some relative peace in South Sudan, but there are also still... There's also still putting of ropes left, right, and center between the government and some of the rebel unions that are still, you know, not in agreement with the government of South Sudan. Okay? We hope we've given you an insight of, you know, the security situation in our region and what is going on. And uh, we hope to catch you next time. Same place same channel as a matter of fact and uh, we want to urge you that if you haven't subscribed to this channel please please it is the way we feel rejuvenated to continue researching and bringing you you know content like this so please go ahead subscribe to our channel you can press a like button you can share for to your friend so as we can so as that we are able to build an indomitable you know channel that will always bring you very good insights on security and other issues that concern East Africa especially, and Africa at large. I want to thank you and wish you a nice time. Bye-bye.
Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button such that you can be reminded whenever we put a new video. Much love.